Salwe Omnes, Salwe, once again, your host, Marius Globius, for this channel of Latin Language Revival. The following presentation is the finale to the series that I've uploaded on the conversations between Pontius Pilate and Jesus of Nazareth. The first few minutes is in Latin, right out of the box. You might want to refer to the previous video to get the translation on the first couple of minutes. It's the same slide. And then the following ones, uh, I will provide some translation and audio. I'm still working on the subtitles um, and other little improvements. Uh, any suggestions from any of you would be fantastic so I can improve the content, the delivery, the presentation, and make it more engaging for everyone. Unfortunately, I wish I could add music, but uh, because of copyright issues and all that, I'm just not quite prepared for that yet. But we're getting there. Uh, there will be more material after this presentation in the future with authors, excerpts from authors before Christ, uh, after the crucifixion of Christ, or modern era, common era. Uh, so look forward to that. I would love to have you as my audience if you haven't already subscribed. For those, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Gracias, Tibiago. Enjoy the following presentation. Thank you. Wale. Tu es Rex Judaiorum. A te met ipso ob dicis, an ali dixerum tibi de me. Num quide yo judaius sum, gente tua, et pontifices tradiderum te mihi, quid fecisti. Tu dicis quia rex sume yo, eo in hoc natus sum, et ad hoc. Veni in mundum, ut testimonium per ibeam veritati, omnis qui est ex veritati, audit vocem meam. Quid est veritas? Veritas caelis est, judicati sunt qui veritas ajunt, vides ad eis potestatibus terrae. The contention between the Jewish clergy and uh, Pontius Pilate and those that were in favor of Christ or defenders of Christ and those that were offended by Christ and King Herod and so many players in this era or in this period was like a game of chess between the good, the bad, and the ugly. I show here the eagle as being that of representation of Rome. And in this case, Pontius Pilate was the representation of Rome in Judea, in the province of Judea. We know that the good we consider to be Jesus of Nazareth. After so much wrangling and back and forth between Pontius Pilate and the Jewish clergy, he finally was pushed into a corner, and that's why I call it a game of chess, because he was cornered in. Um, once he, or after he had presented Christ to the mob, the Jewish mob, to either establish or make the exchange between Christ being crucified instead of a convicted criminal, which was Barabbas, or who was Barabbas, uh, and this was customary every year during the, this season of Passover to exchange a prisoner for another, according to what the Jewish population would vote for. When Pontius Pilate expressed that he had found no crime being committed by Jesus of Nazareth, he told this to the Jewish mob, I find no crime that this man has committed. Et exinde quaerebat Pilatus di mitere eum. Judai autem clamabant dicentes, si unc dimitis non es amicus caesaris. 
omnis enim qui se regem facit contradicit Caesari. And this was from John chapter 19, verse 12. And I translate that now. And from then on, Pilate was seeking to release him. But the Jews were crying out, saying, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar, for anyone who makes himself a king contradicts Caesar. And this is where they had Pilate cornered in. And this pissed off Pilate. It was like, what the hell? These people, I, I can just imagine Pontius Pilate, he must have been irritated, fed up, done with these uh, Jewish people that were complaining about Jesus of Nazareth when he time and time and again found absolutely no wrongdoing by Jesus. He responds, in a rage, and I quote this from chapter 9 in the book of Nicodemus, he says to the Jews, always, your nation has been rebellious, and you always speak against your benefactors. The Jews say, what benefactors? He says to them, your God led you out of the land of Egypt from better slavery and brought you safe through the sea as through dry land and in the desert fed you with manna and gave you quails and quenched your thirst with water from a rock and gave you a law, which in this case was the Ten Commandments. And in all things, you provoked your God to anger and sought a molten calf and you exasperated your God and he sought to slay you and Moses prayed for you and you were not put to death. And now you charge me with hating the emperor. I can just imagine. I can just picture the scene, the rage, the absolute disbelief that um, Pontius Pilate must have felt at that point. So we continue on. When finally, there was a couple of words exchanged before finally Pontius Pilate had to sentence Christ to the cross. Um, and with the charge of being king, of claiming himself to be king, this is where he was checkmated. Um, because if he went against it, then that's what exactly what they were going to do. And claim that he was supporting a king, somebody who was claiming himself to be king. And in essence, challenging the authority of Caesar. Acepta aqua, lavit manus coram populo dicente, inocente, eosum a sanguine justi uius, vos vidaritis. The translation to that, and again, it comes from both uh, the book of Nicodemus and, the, and in the Gospels. Uh, Pilate washes his hands. In the book of John, it says he faces the people, or the Jews, but in the book of Nicodemus, he faces the son, it says here, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. You see to it, or see you to it, as it's laid out there. Well, again, the hatred. I mean, if the hatred you must have when you say something like the Jews responded with, Sanguis eius super nos et super filios nostros. That means his blood be upon us and upon our children. I don't know about you, but to say that you hate someone and that you want them to be murdered or assassinated or eliminated and may that person's blood be upon you and not only you, but your children, your posterity, that is an incredible level of hatred. Um, no doubt about that. No doubt whatsoever. Once uh, Pontius Pilate sentences Jesus to the cross to execution, he does order that a sign be put on the cross. And as shown in this image, he had it written in Hebrew, in Greek, and in Latin. Um, and you can see in the depiction here, it's in Latin in the middle. I typed it up in the top so it'll be clearer. Jesus Nazarenus Rex Judaiorum. Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. And we know the story. 
Most of us all know the story. I'm not going to get into all these details. There's plenty of films out there. But, you know, crucifixion is no easy task. It's no joke. And contrary to the depiction in films and literature, maybe in our modern times, I have a hard time believing that the Romans really just were so at ease at crucifying anyone. Um, Pontius Pilate definitely wrangled with this. He struggled with executing him. It, if it was that easy for him, he would have just ordered it. But he really, in a way that I don't believe many of us understand, he tried to intervene for or intercede for Jesus of Nazareth as much as he possibly could. And being that he got checkmated again, I use that term, he was left with no other choice. Um, and as we, and as I mentioned, we know a lot of this story, the, the, the scourging, the carrying of the cross to the mountain of Calvary and, uh, the lamenting of the mother of Christ and all the family and followers of Christ after the crucifixion, it is reported in the book also of Nicodemus of how um, Pontius Pilate and his wife were very saddened and, and mournful of his passing. And I use this image here in the beginning or in the opening of the other parts to this series of the eclipse, because it was reported that there was an eclipse that took place at that time. Uh, after the crucifixion, which again, just astounds me that when, and I'm going to quote this real quick on chapter 11 in the book of Nicodemus, of the centurion who reported to uh, Pontius Pilate the uh, earthquake that happened, the darkening of the sky, the eclipse, and when the procurator and his wife heard this, procurator meaning Pontius Pilate, they were exceedingly grieved and neither ate nor drank that day. And Pilate sent for the Jews and said to them, Have you seen what has happened? And this is their response. Oh, come on. There's been an eclipse in this usual way in the past. It's no big deal. That's paraphrasing what they responded with. Without much ado, thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this channel for more stories from the ancient times, from ancient Rome in the classical period, uh, and the classical pronunciation or recitations of some of the scripts and books of so many writers. This ends the series for this uh, book of Nicodemus, the Gospel of Pilate, as it is also known. I didn't realize that this kind of converged with the Passover season, or Lent, but uh, there you have it. Thank you so much. Wale.